That is Greece's entry in the Eurovision Song Contest. Canadian-born Katarina Duska with her song Better Love. Now, the 29-year-old will take to the stage just a few hours from now when the final of the annual competition gets underway in Tel Aviv, Israel. Yelena Adzik joins us mm -hmm. now to talk a little bit more about this. Now, this isn't the first time that there's been a Canadian who's competed for another no. country. Yes, Celine Dion, if many will recall. She actually represented Switzerland because for a time that's where she was living. So it has happened before. For. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of mix-ups or mash-ups on purpose when it comes to geography. I mean, when you think of countries like Australia being allowed to compete a couple of years back, they were entered as just a friendly kind of competition and they just stuck around. Uh, since the 70s, Israel has been a part of the competition, although obviously not geographically in Europe. So uh, this is something that is part of the spirit of this overall festival. It's about unity and bringing everyone together. Okay, we're going to hold that for a second as I give you a little bit of a look at the final that will be competing tonight because in that spirit of you know community and bringing everyone together you've got countries represented I mentioned Australia but also you've got the Netherlands in there Albania Sweden Serbia Russia Azerbaijan Denmark Norway and uh, Switzerland as well as Malta and so this is something that millions upon millions of people do watch for and not just in Europe because of course many Canadians uh, even if we're maybe more ensconced in North American style singing competitions many hail from Europe or countries around Europe or have family represented there so there are a lot of people who are invested and ready to watch and see who wins. And now, aside from all of the enjoyment, too, there's also controversy, of course, that comes with this event. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no question. I mean, so the decision to hold the event in Tel Aviv, it makes sense because last year the winner was from Israel, and that's what they do as a tradition. So the problem for a lot of other people, though, they're protesting, and I'll give you a take a look at these pictures that are coming in. Uh, they're protesting. This is a boycott from pro-Palestinian activists who have asked companies and performers to disengage from Israel over its ongoing conflict conflict with Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Now, one of those people that they would prefer to disengage would be Madonna. Madonna is scheduled to perform. Here's uh, an Instagram post she uh, sent out with one of her new songs, likely going to perform one of the new songs, one of the old ones. And this is, uh, you know, in amidst the protests, she says that she's not there to be choosing sides. She says, I'll never stop playing music to suit someone's political agenda, nor will I stop speaking out against violations of human rights when, wherever they occur in the world, wherever they might be. And she does go on to say that my heart breaks every time I hear about the innocent lives that are lost in this region. But it is interesting because the person who is reported to have sponsored her performance, who has paid for it, is the uh, Canadian-Israeli billionaire and ph philanthropist uh, Sylvan Adams. He is uh, taking a stance, of course, on the other side of the spectrum. Have a listen. I think that uh, in today's uh, era of social media, Three people in a boiler room can make a lot of noise, but I think it's, I think it's without substance. Uh, and I think that these people don't know very much. They're, they're basically ignorant. And uh, they, I would invite them to come here and, and, and experience uh, Eurovision and Israel for themselves, and maybe they'd uh, have their eyes opened. All right, another point of view. So you can decide how you feel. Uh, the protests continue, but so does the ramp up to the competition, which is taking place tonight.